decade following the Civil War, people of all creeds and colors were part of the West. The following is a story about two of those people. Hey! He's probably asleep! After that letter he wrote? Maybe he didn't expect us this soon! Come on, take these arms and get them under cover! Make a sound. Gentlemen, the sheets need laundering. We've heard of you too. You're Earl Corey, once master of Willow Hill. You left your plantation in 62 in the spring, rode off to join your brigade. You left Willow Hill behind to your Yankee loving brother and an overseer worse than dirt. I don't defend my brother, sir, as you seem to know. But you're wrong to malign my overseer. I said worse than dirt. And I say that Jeb Collins is an honest man and a loyal worker. Now you take off that hood, I'll tell you to your face. Jeb! Jeb! Ah, you good man, Captain! <laughs> what is this? What's going on here? Didn't mean for no one to get hurt, but he started shooting. I guess it's what they call reflex. Bring him on over here. Somebody get some water. You get it. I get it. I'm right sorry. It was truly an accident, Captain. Where's that water? Trask? Sorry, Captain. Amy. Pancho. 
What is he saying? I couldn't make it out, Captain. It sounded something like Pancho. Well, maybe it's cold. The Trask, you get on out to the stable. You can keep a better eye on the road from there. Tear this into pieces. It's gonna need a doctor. Well, that storm's gonna bust wide open again. That crick will overflow. Ain't nobody gonna get out of there now. Here, give me a hand with him. You want this under him? Yeah. Come on. Good. Uh, right. Sure, it's a joy being with you again, Captain. Just like old times, you and me, doctor and one of the... You know I was coming here tonight. I can't deny it. Oh, Ben wrote me a letter. Said he had some information about an outlaw. Because me had him write it. Where is he? Well, after he wrote the letter, he just took off. Said he was going to visit some relatives. That's not like Ben. Well, you ain't seen Ben in a long time, Captain. There's a lot that's been changed. Time's done it. The war and whatever happened ever since, it's all different now. Well, look at you, Captain. Running with a black bounty hunter as a partner. Well, now, if that ain't a change, then grits and greens ain't food. How come you and him got hooked up together, Captain? It's my business. He's in mine. Stopped anyway. Yeah, it should hold him for a bit. Long enough for you to tell me what this is all about? Boy, you just as quick as you always were, that's for sure. I started all by having you meet my boys. Big fella there's Link Maxwell. Link's from near back home. He had a little farm near Willow Hill. Yankees burned it all out on him after the war. Captain Corey. This here is Clay Barton. Clay's the Alabama boy. It's a real privilege to meet you, Captain Corey. Jeb here has been telling us all about you. What a true and honorable man you are. Davis, you tell the captain where you're from. Kentucky. Born and bred. I ain't no relation to old Jeff Davis, though. I wished I was. Fellas, before me, my daddy was overseer for his daddy at Willow Hill. That there was the finest land in the entire sovereign state of Virginia. Ain't that right, Captain? I recall that it was. Yeah, you remember how we used to go riding out every Sunday and then inspect that whole plantation, and I'd point everything out to you, and, and you'd say to me, good work, Jim, that's good work. Then last thing, we'd, we'd stop by the quarters, and all them slaves would come out grinning and, and kind of shy-like, and, and you'd smile at them and, and tell them about some big cut or something, and they'd just... just just be so mighty happy. Except all that's gone now, Captain Corey. Why? It's over and done with, Jim. I don't think about yesterday or tomorrow. Oh, no, you have to think about that. We can't just sit back and watch. You can't forget for one minute now that your own brother sold out to the Yankees. Well, I heard tell he married your girl when you went away. I don't see as my personal life as any concern of yours. Blink! Keep your mouth shut! Get up there to that stable and help Trask keep an eye on that road. That company could come any time now. Old Link's had a pretty tough time, Captain. He's kind of bitter. What company is coming? Oh, we're going to have a little company later on. Who? Clay, get on over the window and keep a sharp eye. Who's coming? Trust me, Captain, just like you used to. I don't like surprises, Jed. You like this surprise, Captain. I never let you down all them years at Willow Hill, did I? Where'd you hide that body? Back there on her pile of straw. What's the matter? Well, I had a run-in with the landed gentry. Corey? Yeah, he's just like all them plantation owners. They get better than anybody else. But he ain't landed gentry now. And that means that he ain't no better than us. You want a whiskey? 
All I want is some answers. Now, you haven't told me one thing that explains your being here. Hey, Earl. Captain Earl. You talking to old Jeb, remember? All right. You heard of Night Riders? You could have chosen a more popular application. Why? Because they call us outlaws? That's just a certain people because they don't understand. Well, what do you call yourselves? Patriots? Maybe you haven't heard what they've done to the South since the war. Yes, I've heard. Well, maybe you haven't heard at all. You've been away out west over four years now. Sir. There are very bad things happening back home now. I've seen things, Captain. I never thought it could happen in my country. North or South. They shouldn't be happening here. They are. My father, he was... His father was shot down in front of him by a drunken trooper. It's the military, mostly. From the carpetbaggers. You remember the Hammonds? Lived just south of Willow Hill. Their place was put in a block and sold to a Yankee for 10 cents to the dollar. And over in Allen County, old man Rutledge's son, Trent. Well, he was hanged in front of the entire family for taking a gun to some soldiers. That kind of thing has to be stopped, Captain. We have to do something about that. All of us. And you want me to join you, is that it? More than that, Captain. I want you to share leader in with me. You got the wrong man, Jim. Captain, there's only a handful of us now. But there are hundreds waiting to join if they just knew that you were with us. I told you, what interests me is today. I don't care a hoot about what's done and past. Well, it's today that I'm talking about. Now, it's your duty. You're a southerner like us. Look at you, man, with your background, riding, chasing bounty, riding with some black gunman where you could be doing something that's worthwhile. I've done a lot of things since the war, Jeb. But one thing I'm sure as hell not gonna do, and that's ride around the countryside in a black hood. Well, throw them away. They ain't important. But you are. Now, I got a list. I got a list of every big used-to-be landowner in Virginia and the Carolinas to start with. Most of them you know, all of them know you. But they'd listen to you, Captain. They're your kind of people. They, they'd help us with money, with guns, and with men. Help us do what? To bring back the South, Captain, like we used to know it. The South that we knew before the war, when it was free of all the pain and the plundering that all them carpetbaggers brought. Your daddy, Captain, your daddy and mine, they built the old South. Now, their sons, you and me, we can build it back up again. But there ain't to be no killing, right, Jeff? Except to defend us. That's the first rule, Clay. That's the very first rule. My kind of South, eh? My kind of people. Well, what would we do for them? Well, we'd start by getting them back some of the stuff we stole from them. Some of their paintings and their fine silver. That they're precious family things. And maybe even their land. Feel. Oh, you shouldn't have drawn your gun. Funny thing, whenever I see a black hood sighting on me, I just can't seem to help myself. That's bleeding again. Afraid that bullet's gonna have to come out. Feel strong enough? What's the difference? <laughs> Listen, got some pretty interesting friends. Wait. I was unconscious. A man dream when he's like that? I don't know. It's important. Because if I wasn't dreaming, there's a body in the stable. What? In the poncho. Are you sure? No, I ain't sure. Only how can a dream be that real? This body. Did you get a good look at the face? I just started to look. I lifted up the poncho. That's all I remember. Well, I'm gonna have to 
try to get that bullet. Would you heat some water, please? There's somebody coming. <laughs> Yeah, it's him. But with an escort. Who's coming, Jed? It'll explain itself in just a minute, Captain. Then it's all gonna make sense. It'll help you make up your mind. If there's any reason I can't have my gun back, I better know right now. Feed and water the horses here. With that storm about to break again, I suggest we stay the night. See if you can rouse someone. Jonathan, do we have to? It'll be warm and dry, my dear. A lot safer than driving in this storm. No, now, everything's going to be just fine. Now, don't you fret. Y'all, come on in now. Well, we got ourselves a fine mess of bluebirds, Captain. The war's four years over, Jeb. No, it's just changed masks. Oh, don't worry. Ain't nobody going to get hurt. Trask, take the boys across the creek. Let them loose, but tie their hands behind the back. That way, by the time they find any help, in this storm, we'll be long gone. Come on, Yankees. Start moving. This is your surprise. I'm a little disappointed. Oh, it ain't begun yet, Captain. Link, if you start searching the wagon, I'll send Davis out to help you. Davis, you make a hand out there. Clay, where your manners? Don't let the lady stand there. Get her a chair. You understand, of course, you're all facing a rope for this outrage. Kim, may I present General Jonathan W. Carver, Deputy U.S. Military Governor of the Occupation Force of the State of Virginia. General Captain O'Cora, Virginia Volunteers. General, here's one of them carpetbaggers we was talking about, Captain. For three years now, he's plundered the state of Virginia. He's plucked it clean like feathers off a chicken. Took everything that wasn't nailed down. And he wasn't above murder to get it. That's a ridiculous lie. He even stole one of the women. Ain't that right, Mrs. Carver? Yeah! Wait till you see! Well, bring it in here, Clay. Give him a hand. We'll let what's in that wagon speak for itself. You've no right to search my personal belongings. You all right? It's quite a party we got here. Patriotic speeches, 
famous people, fine ladies, but I'm laying here bleeding to death. You're all right. How come I want to change places with you? Well, let's see some of these here personal belongings of the good general. Look at here, Captain. The fortune is one trunk alone. <laughs> and the whole wagon's full of them. You can buy anything in the South these days if you're willing to pay enough for it. Well, what have we here, General? Are you familiar with the Broadhurst Plantation, west of Richmond? Well, that painting is one of their prized possessions. I visited there many times. There was no price on that painting. No member of that family would part with that, no matter how dire their circumstances. Did you find any medical supplies in that wagon? There was a small chest in the buggy. I'll get it. Do you have any medical knowledge, General? My brother was a surgeon. I only watched him twice, no more than three times after Antietam. That's hardly medical knowledge. That's well, a heck of a lot more than I got. Get ready. <laughs> There's another bed here someplace, isn't there? In there, Captain. Get you, get him. Get what you need from here. What was that? What was that, Cam? I heard gunshots. Lightning hitting a tree, most likely. Storm sounds like that in the woods, Captain. You've been out in the open country too long. Sophie. Put these in the water. All right, get out. One thing I'm grateful for, she ain't gonna be doing the poking. Yeah, drink this. You're gonna need it. It's a bad man out there. You're afraid, Jim. He's got you so blinded by stories about Willow Hill and Yankee carpet baggage that you can't see nothing. Only a southerner would understand. You forget it's my sock, too. You think just because I left it, I don't love it no more? How could you love something that brought you such misery? Well, maybe because I had so little, I loved it more. I ain't saying Jim's lying about what's going on. That gentleman there is a fat-bellied skunk. But I'm saying he's he as bad as Jim and a couple of them others. Don't you worry about Jeb. I've known him a long time. I can handle him. He's not important. His boys like Clay and what they believe. That's what's important. The generals ain't going to be here forever. They're going to leave after the occupation. Then you're going to have the Jebs to deal with. You can't control them. They're going to be given all this, because they'll be going to be big and fat and powerful. And they're going to be telling you what to do. You and all the starry-eyed clays in the world, if you're still around. I thought you were the idealist, and I was the cynic. Come on, drink. be responsible for what happens. If I probe for that bullet, there's a chance I'll kill him. I'm not a doctor. And if you don't do it, then you better get to it. I can't. I kill him. 
Give me that. The whiskey. Oh. is right. It's a very cool philosophy. But very real. <laughs> yeah, got it. You're the kind of man I've been hunting down, not going into partnership with. I suppose uh, he's more your idea of a partner. I uh, thank you, General, for your merciful assistance. You're indeed a credit to your uniform. <laughs> Captain heard those shots. What do you say? Nothing. Pretty suspicious economy. Guide them bodies. Never mean. Making a mistake, Captain. Take it over. Am I? The alternative is that if anything happens to me and my wife, you and your gang of cutthroats will be hung for murder. I suggest you go outside and cool off your ideas of amusement. I don't have to take orders from you, mister. Link, you keep your mouth shut. What about it, Captain? Does he take orders from you alongside of me? Now, we've told you and we've shown you, but you still got your answer bottled up tight. Captain Corey, a lot depends on you saying yes. Confused, sir. Well, it is confused. Now, I know we're right. I know there ain't nothing gonna stop us from trying. But you're the only one can control it. Without you, there'll be blood. I know that for a fact. Now, Clay, did you... Well, it's true. We can't afford to go off half-cocked. It's, it's too important. We need to be guided. You'll make it work, sir. I know. You'll make it mean something. But without you, sir, ain't no one gonna be able to tell us apart from them we're fighting. 
You take me back, Clay. I had men like you in my command. A long time ago. The time is now, Captain. It's up to you. I'll be honored, gentlemen. The answer is yes. <laughs> Captain Corey, you're either blind or a fool. In light of this new arrangement, your new command, what do you think's going to happen to us? You'll be taken back to Virginia and tried. That will never happen. Who's going to prevent it? Look around you, sir, at the faces of your men. Do you really believe that my wife and myself and my servant will leave this place alive? Well, Captain's given his word now, ain't he? The word of an officer and a gentleman? And you, sir. Are you an officer and a gentleman? Surprise, you heard me. Seeing as how you took a giant step into yesterday. Don't judge that bunch by what you see now. A couple of months' time, I'll have that ragtail outfit whipped into a disciplined force. Man, don't you know? Don't you see? Don't you hear? Laying in here listening. I never thought you'd blind yourself so. You didn't see that boy's face. You didn't look into his eyes. Did you look at the rest? Did you watch them? Show that boy believes what he's saying. But every cause got its dreamer. But you ain't no dreamer. You ain't wet behind the ears. What's gotten into you? Maybe I've been asleep too long without dreams. Maybe I turned my back for too long on what I should have been a part of. Or putting on a hood and riding with the moon's eye. There's not going to be any hoods. It was I say now. You're not going to control them. Face up to it. When you're off in Roanoke or Richmond talking to some fine, fancy gentleman, what you think your ragtag army's gonna do? Close order drill? You sure worried about me? I'm worried about my neck, Captain. Because from where I'm laying, there don't seem to be any place in your plans for me. Well, that's up to you. Because we're gonna need everybody. Black and white. We're gonna build a new South. A South with freedom. For everybody. Not the way you said about it. Me and that general got suspicions about how we're going to end up. He's going to be dead. And I'm going to be dead, too. Because I ain't going to live in chains no more. something back there. Uh, 
Well, a man's liable to hear almost anything on a night like tonight. Sure is some storm. Kind of like we used to have back in Alabama. How long has it been since you've been home? Two, three years, I guess. I've just been drifting further and further west. How about you, Captain? Oh, last time I was in Virginia was 65. You're in trouble. Trouble, sir? Are you beginning to have second thoughts about all this? Thinking maybe there's some other way? No, sir. I know we're doing right. I know there are some things that can't be helped. What thing? Whatever we've done up to now. But with you, Captain, but with you here, it'll all be different. They'll listen to you. Well, they... Are you having second thoughts, sir? I don't know, Clay. For four years now, I haven't committed myself beyond the next moment. Sir. If you don't have faith, how can we? Trying to sneak in the back way with this. I suppose that was your idea. Don't you know you could have got that girl killed? Must have seen her leaving the stable. Would you stay out of this? Now, nothing is going to happen to you. I'll see to that. Wait. That body I thought was a dream. The one in the stable, she found it. An old black man shot in the back. Ben? Ben, who was supposed to have rode off to visit relatives. Maybe it was somebody else. What's the difference? He's dead. And he was shot in the back. You still think you're going to take the general back for trial? I saw the light of reason in your eyes. In the event, I was not mistaken. I urge you to consider what you're doing. Go on, get a wiggle on now. Don't go bothering the cabin.
Something on your mind, Jeb? I was just gonna ask you the same thing, Captain. You've been quiet as an old owl this morning. A big step we're taking. Yeah, big as the sun. The sun can burn a man, Jed. Well, it's a source of life, Captain. Anybody close to the soil knows that. Well, I'll wait outside. We don't want to hang around here too long. Huh? Stay around here and wait on another bullet, you crazy. There are not going to be any bullets. You ain't convinced yet, are you? I'm being torn apart, that's all I know. You doing the tearing. You find Ben's body? Man, what you waiting on? What's got to happen for you to see? I know these men have done wrong in the past, but that's all done with. I'll see to that. You ain't going to see to nothing. You can't see the jibs. How are you going to see to anything else? I'll come back for you. No, don't you come back for me. You go on about your business. I guess this is it, man. It's got to be. We had them a long time. Oh, we got all sorts of rigs and outfits. It's a long way back. Looks real natural, don't you think? What about us? Well, I figured that, uh, Clay, you and me, we'd, we'd sort of wait. You know, give them a couple hours head start. That way, anybody see them, no questions asked. What's the matter? I want a good look at those tunics. Why is that, Captain? Because there's a man lying out in the barn with a ventilated back. I see that disease is catching. I think those soldiers that you freed are lying out in the field somewhere with the wind whistling through them. So that gentleman you once was never died in you, Captain. That squeamish gentleman who rode so clean and fancy through Willow Hill. We're gonna let these people go, Jeb. We're gonna let them go now, unharmed. Was this a squeamish during the war? This is war! You think I made up all them stories? You tell me those stories, Jeb. You tell me how we're gonna bring back the old South. You tell me how we're gonna return all these stolen things. You tell me how we're gonna make all the wrongs right. And then you tell me how murder fits into your plans. It's fought with fire! All them Yankees gotta die! You fight fire with water, Jeb. Now you're gonna do as I say. No, we're gonna do as I say. Cause there's five of us, Captain. Jeb, you're gonna take orders from me, just like you always have. Look out, Captain.
Captain Ma? Corey, there's a gun in my head. Better listen to him, Captain. Talk to him, boy, make him understand. I'm gonna be taking him with me, Captain. Jeb? We're gonna be leaving now, Captain. Me and your old black boy here. Corey? He's run out like I told you. Make a break for it. Go out the back window. be needed to testify at the general's hearing. I'll be there as soon as he's well enough to ride. Lieutenant, would you take care of that wagon? The contents of the property of the people of Virginia. Goodbye, Captain. Goodbye, General. I hope they hang you. Perhaps they will. General? I'm going to be court-martialed. You'll need someone there with you, Jonathan. and ride out? Yeah. What about you? A day or two. As long as it's a slow ride. I'll wait. What you see when you look at where the kid fell? I see mud. A very poor battlefield. You know, I've been thinking about what you said last night. What's that? About it being your south, too. Us. Cousins, in a way. Corey, gonna have to think about that. 